Hey there, I'm Garth. I'm the animation tutor. I create a whole bunch of courses and mentorships that are specifically built for students to build their portfolio to get into their top choice animation schools. I've been helping young artists become animators for over 10 years now, and I've gotten over 100 students into colleges like Sheridan, Seneca, Capilano, RISD, SVA, CalArts, Gobelin, and the Animation Workshop in Denmark. I've taught students from all around the globe get into these incredible animation schools. And honestly, it's never hard to get students excited about animation because it's such an incredible medium. So check out my website to see all the courses and mentorships that I offer or book a meeting with me and I can kind of go through all the different learning resources that we have with you. Thanks for listening and enjoy the student interview. How's it going? Um, I'm, I'm doing well. It, it's so good to see you again. Great. So, yeah. Especially in this context. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so how's it feeling? Um, it's, um, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely, I guess it's weird. It's weird because I'm not, I can't say I'm like immediately super like excited and invigorated although i am definitely glad for it but um yeah i think i've just done it so so many times um, yeah that you're, I'm kind you're of like, a weather hey, veteran it's, it's great that it happened but yeah yeah that's as much as it goes but i'm definitely um i'm definitely glad that i don't have to do this again possibly yeah this was your third time right um this is my fourth technically fourth okay um, yeah it was my fourth time because i did one in my high school year and then i did a program i did it once at while well, i was doing another program i i did it once there okay. um then i i took a break year for it oh wait no 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 i did it in high school i don't think i did it in that program year i took a break year for it um oh. i did uh, another when I was doing the arts fundamental program at Sheridan. Oh, last week. gotcha. Okay. Um, and then this year. So yeah. Been a wow. While. Wild. Well, here you are 88%. And honestly, like when I look at your portfolio, to me, it feels like higher than an 88%. I, they, they were very tough this year on a lot of different areas. So, and yet not as much in other areas it's been confusing a little bit but um nonetheless i when i see your portfolio it, it feels like not just squeak again but you feel like mid mid to low 90s to me really so um let's let's have a look at your score sheet anyways um that's that's so, really kind of you to hear to, to say oh yeah for sure um and and also hank did you um i can't remember what, did you find out right away? I know there was multiple times that information was being released. How did it feel when you first opened the email? Like, what was that? What was that moment like? Um, I definitely had to. I definitely had to read it like twice at least. <laughs> um, yeah. Because, well, actually, actually, I didn't find out from the email. I actually found out um from the uh the application portal itself oh okay. um, i didn't get an email until like a lot afterwards so i found out from the oh. application portal itself and seeing that i was actually i thought i was looking at the wrong thing because okay. i was like i was expect I, I was kind of expecting also to see the again like oh we're, we're sorry we're glad you applied and all that yeah. and i was like did i did i apply for like an arts fundamentals program again am i seeing this this is <laughs> where is the new one yeah. but yeah i had to look a few times to see oh no that is actually for um, the animation program great awesome okay well let's let's we'll go through all of your work and if you have anything that you want to say about any any of them in particular then feel free to jump in okay so figure drawing. oh these are your long ones i guess so your short gestures so let's see, what did you, uh, I'll just have this over here so I can kind of see. So, okay, so nine out of, wow, actually your observational marks are fantastic. Um, so nine out of 10 uh, for your figures. Oh, nice little, you gave it a little, 
why not eh just like a little uh you even mentioned the pose length wow okay Yeah. <laughs> a awesome little title. i like the looseness of this too i think that's Uh, for some reason, I, I think it was either last year or the previous year where a lot of people that were submitting were making these like beautifully clean gestures. And that was like, to me, I was like, it's a gesture. Like usually gestures are a little messy or a little like you've done it quickly. It has the, it has the essence of quick movement. Right. But I, I didn't see that in some of them. It felt like they'd been fussed over too much, which to me doesn't really feel like a, a gesture. So it's nice that you, you've maintained a loose line while still, hitting those structural landmarks. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I feel like there's like a specific Sheridan style of figure drawing that a lot of people aim for. Sure. Um, and like somehow they're able to do that in the in their shoulder poses. I have no idea how, but Yeah. oh, and maybe that was what you were looking at. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. That's, that's what it makes me think of. Yeah. These are great. I guess if there is a little thing I want to jump in to say, I, I, I do want to say that I feel... really lucky with this section of the portfolio because those Sure. two um short poses i did not know i had until almost the last minute i didn't think i Oh, had wow. anything for the short poses at all but i was Okay. working through and i was like maybe these count Yeah. um and i hey if they gave me a nine out of ten that's something that's actually such a surprise to me That's <laughs> great, yeah. Yeah, it's funny with this section versus all the others that you can fuss over for so long and... Mm -hmm. and you know, develop and you know, get, get feedback and apply it. Whereas figure drawing, you could do it. You could literally do it in one minute and then that could be your 10 out of 10 figure drawing. You know, it's, it's just Yeah. such a different experience, but, but that said, let's not undervalue the, the, the effort it took to get to that point. That's where all the work Of comes course, in. It's of just course. like the, the, the pile of paper that you create in, in getting to be able to do this in one minute, really. I mean, this is, this is a lot of strokes in one minute. That's fantastic. That's true. Yeah. And you got perfect on your hand drawing. Awesome. Um, I think they really liked your cleanness. It's so readable. It's just, yeah, just super readable. And also a nice thing to dispel here, as well as many other portfolios, you do not need a front and back view. I don't know what rumor has got that out there, but there was this rumor going around that you need to have a back view and a front view of the hand. However you do that is up to you, but... And you absolutely don't need that. I don't know why that rumor was circulating, but you have two front views ish. I mean, this is a little bit more of a side view, but still really great. Yeah, I've I've never heard about that rumor and I'm glad I, I Oh, didn't. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I feel like you you miss out on so much uh like information on just the back view because it's Yeah. just sort of you don't get any of that little Yeah. You get the pose knuckles, and everything. but not all the, the great information of the palm. Absolutely. Mm hmm Awesome. Um, okay. you I remember we, we chatted about this one cause I was so, Oh. <laughs> it's so frustrating that this was an 11 out of 15. I was like, wow. I thought like, I found this character so original and so dynamic. Uh, I liked that some of it was less skeleton. I, I don't know. I really believe that this could be, this felt like something in a studio Ghibli film or something. So yeah. How do you feel about it now after receiving your score? Oh, yeah, this is still so frustrating. I mean, this this thing here is basically the reason my mark is so low. This and the Yeah. and the personal work. But the personal work I'm I'm not Hmm. I'm not too upset over because that's Sure. that's a whole different thing. I feel like that's a harder to control each year, but Sure. um this one I Ah, yeah, this is, um, yeah, I, I try to go for an interesting character and Mm hmm um, I, because I thought, hey, if I can do something that I'm interested in, that would make it easier for me to do and hopefully do well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I, I looked at this afterwards for a while, just trying to figure out what was the issue with this. And Mm-hmm. I think it's just really... that feat i think the that feat maybe if you look at it like quickly it seems there's no issue but then if you look at it a bit more every pose there is actually slightly different on the feet um Hmm. like that front front views pose is not the uh, three-quarter view pose um profile debatably you could say it kind of matches Yeah, the it's front hard to tell but because we don't know how much yeah space is in between those feet. 
Yeah, huh. that back, that three、uh, quarter back is that distance is definitely not the same as front and not the same as profile. Everything's just slightly different. And、mm. wow, that's and think, ab- it feels、yeah. abnormally fussy, though. I guess like I I see others that also have feet that are not a hundred percent in the same position, and yet、mm. still they seem to. I yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe、mm. maybe there's there's always. There's always just subjective sort of design preferences, right? Like it's hard to、mm-hmm. it's hard to control that a hundred percent, like you said about the personal work. I wonder if they would have actually preferred a more humanoid character as well. I well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I I guess you could still have an animal in a humanoid, like in an anthropomorphized way. I've seen a lot、mm-hmm. of those this year, and and they do tend to do pretty well. And I don't think it's inherently that it's an animal; it's just that. The animal gives them certain features to make the shape language nicer or more complex or more interesting.、Um, mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. It's weird. I really like animal characters. I think I think that's a great way to kind of differentiate yourself from from all the humans because probably there's so many human characters you'd think. But who knows?、Yeah. In the eye of the、yeah. beholder here a little bit, I think. But I, I guess I'm a little. I'm a little bit. Oh, I'm so sorry.、Uh, Oh no! I was just I was just saying I th- I do feel like they're just a bit unnecessarily harsh, but、uh, yeah. What what were you gonna say, Hank? Yeah,、um, I, yeah. I I I the idea that they're they're more harsh with this that's something that that really soothes my soul, right? <laughs>、um, yeah. So thank you for saying that. Yeah, I I think my my biggest concern that I'm wondering now with animal and human characters is that, like you've said, with Those humanoid, but they still have animal features. That animal、mm. features it helps them make it more interesting. Sure.、Um, but I'm wondering if because I do this, I do something like this, they're kind of looking at that, being like, okay, so can this person stylize a, a person? Can this person、sure. stylize a human feet? Because、mm. right, because the human feet, it's a whole,、sure. it's a weirder structure than this. Can they stru-、yeah. uh, stylize fingers and? Yeah, I guess. Or one thing that I was thinking、Not、about、sure. too is maybe、mm-hmm. like if the face was drawn in a way that had more like a structure in a way that allowed it to emote. You know, like if we could、mm-hmm. see very clear. You know, like e- even when they make animals into humanoid type characters, like they'll always like even if they wouldn't normally have this, like a dog will have a cheek so that you can get those little wrinkles when it makes a shape. But the、mm-hmm. eye is kind of this graphic, almost like black hole like shape, and I like that because it's this ominous sort of almost well, it almost feels like an omniscient character that like、mm-hmm. is I don't know serves a very important role in the story. <laughs> But like if the eye was more expressive or something or had that little animation that you flare, I don't know. Maybe maybe that was what would have helped. But I mean, who yeah, knows? I, I, yeah, I think that's a that point makes a lot of sense, and it's just. It's just an area where I haven't showed them through this character that I can、sure. do something like that. Yeah, yeah. I might have missed from、yeah. that. Maybe.、Um, oh yes, your animation that you you. Okay, you got fourteen out of fifteen. Wow.、Um, again, th- this is awesome. That I found like for for everyone potentially watching this at some point. <laughs> I you know it's 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 a simple concept, but this to me feels so incredibly difficult. Like. Because you have to, you're using the animation principles, but then you're you've got this other element of rotation and needing to kind of balance it, and and still ease in and out of each of those motions. And holy, that gives me a headache. Like I've seen students in previous years use like the juice box、uh, uh, straw as like a helicopter, and all、mm-hmm. of them struggled with this exact same thing: is that once you get it lifted. Then it's like oh, but it needs to like have this slight little rotation that needs to be believable, and I have to say yours is probably the most believable of this dynamic where it has this kind of free form rotation from a different axis. Like wow,、uh, what made you want to jump into the furnace <laughs> with this、um, one? <laughs> first of all, that are so much kind words. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so thankful、uh, to to hear that.、Um, I. I think I just, I was really thinking、um, how I could use the the fact that this is the structure that it is in some way.、Mm. Um, I think from a lot of the examples I've seen of people's animations with this, they just they sort of forget a bit about、um, what the object actually is.、Sure. Um, like I I think with、um, the examples you had with students having. 
the juice box being a helicopter. I think that's such a cool idea with that、mm, straw. But、yeah. so much other animations I've seen is just we have this object, but we just treat it as a general cube and we just make it do like a cube thing. That、sure. you know doesn't have to be a juice box. Doesn't have to be a what is this? A walkie-talkie. Yeah. All right. It, it doesn't have to be that.、Yeah. Um, and the only idea that I could come up with that was really interesting to me that I thought, oh, I'd I'd have a fun time doing this. Mm-hmm. Would be to use its antenna as like a sort of balancing thing.、Um, yeah, and I think maybe a factor is also because I did the portfolio a lot of times, so I I also like you know I had a juice box where it jumped up once, and I had it where and I had another thing where where one of the other I think on the USB it was、um, I had to like do a spin, and I just and I guess this was maybe a route where I'm like oh I haven't done that before. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. That's great, good, really great score. Storyboard, okay, pretty good storyboard, Mark.、Um, I was, oh yeah, wow. Okay, so this is another one of those ones that I felt like, personally, I felt like they were a bit harsh.、Um, I thought this was such a fun storyboard. <laughs> I remember I told you this way back when. Just like the fact that we see you, you've done a great job of foreshadowing everything because there's always multiple things going on in the shot. The the baker is right back there, and and actually those little values really help to kind of like frame him properly.、Uh, but the baker's back there, and we can clearly see that the fox is interested in the foreground pastries. And then the baker is emerges in these big and is it he's is a, a, another great character design really that is added to this. So nice. And then in this shot, like you have him kind of making this snide gesture towards the bakery,、uh, intriguing the 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 crows. They are crows, right? I think so. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then we see the bakery back there still. So I, I just, I guess I love what you're able to achieve with each frame, like, and still maintain. And then I love this final shot. Again, we see it's like almost like a frame within a frame kind of composition where we see him chowing down on all these pastries, and then this is still going on. It's not like we need to do this in two shots. So I feel like even if you know you lost a few marks for whatever reason. I feel like that's something that everyone watching can take away from this. It's just, wow, you know what? You can do a lot more with each shot than you think you can. You can have different things. You don't have to have everything so big all the time. Like you can have the character in the foreground, something else going on in the background, or vice versa. So, yeah, really great. How did how did you、yeah. feel about your storyboard, Hank? Yeah, thank you so much.、Um, yeah, I had a lot of、um, I, I I I had this idea for. This prompt and story, and I was really trying to figure out how I can just fit everything in. So I was,、sure. yeah, that that yeah, and I ended up just trying to put、um, as much I as I could in one panel,、mm-hmm. um, and yeah, that.、Um, so that first frame with the colors and the the baker character,、um, that tone is one of your suggestions. So. Credit to you because of that, and for anyone <laughs> watching who is、um, considering, hey, if、uh, if you want to have the animation tutor critique your portfolio, <laughs> he gives great suggestions. I <laughs> appreciate it.、Um, and、uh, my my storyboard, how do I feel about it? I think I'm like this was a mark up from my previous years, and I'm、okay. like. I'm just like glad of that because the、yeah. storyboard is like it's like an eldritch horror to me. I it's so scary. <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah.、Um, I think as for why I think I did lose marks on it, I think my main something I really struggle with is sort of detail control. Sure.、Um, I there's this idea that I know where it's If you don't have a solid foundation on something or a composition, you can sort of use detail or a lot of you know you see a lot of times where people will use detail as a way to cover that up.、Sure. But then, where you know it, it looks good for you know other people, but someone who knows a who maybe knows a bit more about、um, composition and all that, they can see through that. Sure.、Um, you can also have detail making it too busy, and I think in some areas where,、mm. especially that third panel, that's that what I was thinking. Round of trees. Yeah, yeah. I was not sure how to still make it be trees, but also not make it look like a sudden jarring detail shift. Sure. Like, 
I think it was still so much there. I think it was yeah. so much in that bottom left corner there. Mm. Like that little cluster of lines is so much. Um, and I think we talked about this before in uh, a, a, a critique you were giving me with those birds. Although mm. that tree, those birds, those lines, it just sort of disappears in there. Mm. Um and even for something like the fourth uh, fourth panel there, um, there's such a, like, I was really trying to be like, I really need the trees in the background of the top right to not have that detail. But I just yeah. think there's such a disparity of, like, there and then the bottom left of sure. the box. And there is so much detail in that uh, geometric structure, which I felt so hard to do because I'm like, it's a, it's a, geometric structure it, it yeah demands you to and it's in the foreground to... so you're gonna see more detail anyways yeah yeah, yeah i i think i if i were to guess i feel like uh the de the problem of a detailed cluster and not mm -hmm. being able to control that well was something sure. i lost months for yeah fair enough that that could be all right perspective uh so one one mark off on this one wow it's just shocking I, again, I, I thought these were uh, so great. I, I love how this is just such a vivid story. <laughs> it really <laughs> is like, and you were kind of going from the going for this from from day one. I remember you wanted to like have a really interesting, interesting interior, uh, interesting story applied to that interior, and then interesting camera angle chosen of all that. So I think that's that's great. I don't know how do how do you feel about this one? Um. Yeah, so so this one I always wanted to, um, yeah, from the get go I was having an idea of like have it in a in a big uh, spooky ghost hunting thing. I've been watching a lot of those; they're so sure. fun. Mm -hmm. um, how do I feel about this? I think, I think, I there's there's also the same problem of. A detail overload in some places but mm. i think this one i i can kind of get away with because of the context um, yeah but still i i just yes. wish that i was able to control things a little better because you know there's some places where it's just it's a lot you look at this and you're not you're kind of unsure of where to immediately look because everything sure. is everywhere yeah uh, you know and i think there's definitely a little bit of when I was finishing, there was definitely a little bit of insecurity there with the detail. Mm. Of, oh, I yeah. got it. Where I, I, I almost kind of put the same level of detail everywhere. Sure. I think ideally, if I was better at controlling that, I'd be able to choose that a lot more and uh, sure. make things a lot more intentional and or just give the hint of detail without actually putting in visual cluster. There. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're I, well on your way. Yeah. Like when I look back here, your clustering of books and things like I can see that you're clearly trying to simplify things. Like you're not drawing every single line of the book or page, which which is good. And 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 then the book bleeds into the next form because it's in the middle ground or the background even. So you know you don't need to detail everything equally from each area. And I think you're you're getting there, but it's more of an overall sense that you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think the one of the books, I think that book was the the best detail control I did in there. I wish mm -hmm. I had ways to do the same to that, or I wish I sure. was did do that a bit more. Like I think yeah, if you see that cabinet there, there's like a like a combination of lines like right beside the bookshelf that almost just yeah. makes it look like one bold line, and it's just your mm -hmm. eye looks at that and you're like, huh, that's that's something. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I'm attracted. I I get forced into there. Sure. Um, and I think, um, I think I, this was something I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be too careful with tangents. I think there's some places where there's just a tangent there. Uh, I most regrettably on that character, mm -hmm. um that pillar right there on the bottom that chin there that's just a tangent on the curve um i, I think the whole thing is like kind right of here? a tangent 
uh, well, there's almost kind of a tangent that just goes down directly. It meets up with the, the, the coat there. It goes down to the legs. But then the biggest tangent is at the bottom of the pillar with the curve. Um, yeah, you see how there's there's like a little little curve there. And it just, yeah, it merges into that. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wow. I think with... So much cluster I put around in this. I'm Sure. sure there was a lot of places that they could see, like, oh, there's just Yeah. tangents. It was all this Maybe and that could yeah. be a mark I, just for the tangents. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. potentially. Could have been more careful. Sure. We'll see your exterior. Um, I loved how with this, like, we we have a a. It's an interesting shot because we're we're going down. And then there's this like nice kind of fauna and floor in the foreground left. And then it kind of arcs around to the right. And then there's also this like the, the railing here and then a second layer down below even further. So it's funny. It's like, it, it feels, yeah, it feels like a, a manicured little township of some kind. Basically, it's not just like left to its own natural formations. It's there's some control applied to the space. And yet we still get so many nice organic shapes as well. How do you feel about this one? Uh, thank you. I'm I'm so glad to hear that. Um, this one, I'm I'm really happy with how, I guess with the angle, I'm really happy with how I was able to get that slope down on that stair to go into Yeah. there, and I was really happy to be able to show a lot more of the rest of the little town in the, I guess more empty spaces to the top right. Sure. Um, and again, the the way. The idea to open that up and how to open that up, another of Garth's suggestions. I'm Oh really yeah. grateful for that. I remember that, Um, yeah. in terms of, I, I think some some issues I feel about this is that there are some things where I just feel if I had a better understanding of like, I guess town or like past formation, that sort of Sure. thing, I'd be able to compose a lot better. Like it, that. Yeah. little top um i guess corner by the yeah that whole area it's sort of just this curving line there i'm sure if i had just a better knowledge library about that sort of stuff about Sure. you know maybe how cliffside villages may look i could could have been able to design something a lot more interesting than Sure. than this Okay. um so much of this piece was me barely covering up my <laughs> lack of knowledge yeah. I mean, artists are always kind of cheaters, aren't we? We're just grabbing whatever reference we can find online and then doing the best we can. And it's amazing that so true like so so much of the great concept art is still that happening. It's not like the concept artists are like masters of everything. They don't know how buildings are constructed, but they know how to look at reference, grab the pieces they want from that, and then like make it into a cool design. That's really where the artistry comes in. So you might not ever be be a master urban planner, but you can you can definitely observe cities and, and see how it feels to be in them and such. So yeah. Okay. Well let's That's have really a look true, at your yeah. <laughs> your personal work. Um so I guess it's pretty much here here down, aside from the storyboard. So you had, and I like how you didn't have any, uh, any animation, right? It was just your sort of, your, your 2D work. So that's good that you can, well, okay, you lost two marks, but still it's, I don't think it's because you didn't have the animation. I think everyone feels compelled now to put animation in it, but I really don't think you need to. I've, I've seen great marks with, with just drawings and, and artwork of various kinds. So um, yeah, I like how each of your images are very, Very story heavy. This one in particular feels very like, wow. There's this is a whole, there's a whole little universe going on here. So, yeah, really fun. Great. Yeah, it's nice to have some different styles too. Like this one's more painterly. Um, this one's got this like almost cell shaded effect. I guess you could say like the the line, the bold line, and then a, a cool creature design. I know at least a couple teachers at Sheridan uh, are really into creepy creatures, so Oh, a couple points with them. But oh yeah, that's a that's that's a great knowledge to keep in mind. uh... <laughs> yeah, well, this this one's funny. What what uh, you wanted to have a traditional piece, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think my my main problem with my personal work is just I 
don't have that much variety. So much of them sure. are illustrations. Yeah. Um, and the style is like, I'm like, that's the closest variety I have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if I had an animation, I would have <laughs> loved to use it here. But I don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, this was one of the traditional paintings. I'm like, I have to at least play in a traditional painting. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. So this is something from our fundamentals that I just threw in. Yeah. Is there some Giger influence here? I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I was, <laughs> um, I don't think intentionally, but probably, yeah. yeah, probably in the back of my mind. Sure. Yeah. It's always just there. Whenever I see black and white and like skeletal kind of structures, I always think of Giger. But uh, oh, cool! Just yeah, just little, just little like just like this creature, they're just lurking there. Yeah, this helps diversify a bit too the layout. So it's mm -hmm. not you know all well. No, actually, you have some characters in layout too. Great. Another one uh, that I've seen that doesn't have like necessarily you know uh, 30, 30 page PDFs of your personal work that feels just like <laughs> stuffed full. Um, some people do that and that can work, but the thing that I often think about with that is that the more pieces you include, the more pages, that's more to broaden what you can do, but also it's more to lose marks. If they don't like one of those pages, guess what they're going to be critical of? They're looking, they're itching for reasons to take off marks. Mm -hmm. So don't give them any, you know, like just keep it short and sweet and good. And that's, that's great. They might have wanted to see a little bit more variety. I think you're probably right about yeah. that. Like a lot of it is digital painting, but it's again, the character and like the creature. Yeah, th these definitely help. Um, yeah. You don't always have to have that broad. I think the broadness can be overemphasized like any other feature of the portfolio on different dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, breadth is good as long as it's all solid. If not, better to have good work than too much variety, right? So it's a it's a careful balance but uh nice nice work hang so um i just have a few last questions for you um so if you could do the whole thing again not that you ever want to imagine that <laughs> um what would you do differently what i would do differently is not do it again no um, but <laughs> um i'm gonna so i'm gonna assume that this question means not like i have to start doing it immediately yeah. but like I'm doing another year of yes, uh, portfolio. Exactly. And okay. And if that being the case, I think the biggest thing is that I I need to really start thinking about like fully thinking into the portfolio from like as soon as basically I can. Sure. Like as soon as I receive like, oh, I've you know, I didn't get in this year and make this decision to do it again. Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, like really heavy pre-planning for things like the layouts, sure. the um, personal work, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. The personal work uh, to get so much more variety on that would be so important. Yeah. Um, and character rotation mm -hmm. and especially that bigger drawing to be doing like finding somewhere where you can do it weekly as soon as you can yeah. is so helpful because the so many drawing, people have mentioned that that like just yeah. consistent figure drawing all the way through the year not just intensely yes. in january and february yes that is the most unpredictable part like you could do it's it's almost in well it's not actually entirely chance based but it's so mm. chance based like you yeah. could really solid in your like fundamentals and all of that you know your anatomy super well yeah. but you give yourself one session and you just have an off day mm. bigger drawing you can't concentrate or your brain isn't just working as fast yeah, it always happens you just yeah you're not going to get a good bigger drawing yeah yeah totally that's good good advice uh was there some advice that someone gave you that was critical for you um i think um so there's I want to say two things on this. So I think one thing I want to say is, um, I, I think this is something everyone everyone knows, but it's just with the portfolio, you really have to just prioritize what you can finish, what marks you can get. Like it almost mm -hmm. feels like at a certain point, it's all about like kind of lost aversion. Sure. Where, <laughs> like at, at a certain point when you've completed um, 
like a, a good chunk of most of your parts and you're just finishing up, you really have to prioritize like what you're thinking is going to lose the most marks. Sure. Um, and you know that I think that everyone knows that advice just from doing tests in schools, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that's so important for the portfolio. Yeah. Um, second uh, thing I want to say is, well, actually, um, okay, actually, here's what I'm going to say. Um, Garth gave me uh, a, a advice and critique on one of these that I think. Uh, I think it was helpful for my portfolio, but I think it's also just something that's super helpful for me going forward. Hmm. I don't know if you want me to actually say what that is. Go for it. Yeah, I don't even. Um, what, okay, what was okay. Because I'm like I'm a little spoiling here for what they might get. From, <laughs> no, no, from go you. for it. Um, yeah. So during the character turnaround, you mentioned something where, hey, this stuff is 2D. So there are some things where we can. It may not make sense uh, logically for 3D, but we can stylize that a bit. We can design it to think of each view as a different uh, design yeah. um, that's something i've never thought about because i approach uh, approach all of my uh, everything really just three-dimensionally sure um and i think for something for areas like uh like that hat that feather mm. um i was so happy to be able to apply that idea for that feather because yeah because otherwise I, that I, side I, view it's coming towards the camera <laughs> yeah and i personally just feel like that's so like it's so satisfying to see that to see that there was like a decision of where to change that view yeah and you know if i were to see that i would be like well that's really cool and that's something i definitely want to yeah wanna keep doing going forward absolutely that that's especially something i find that like if if anyone watching this feels like they're very like rational, like they, they approach everything very rationally. Like they want to get r realistically a hundred percent, you know, it, yeah. Like you said, in 3d space as if it's perfectly l lined up. Um, but there, there are just times when things are going to look awkward. Like there's, mm -hmm. and, and in a character design, the, the emphasis of that, those two words is the design. <laughs> and there are times when if something's going to look awkward, maybe even not readable from a certain view, change it, change it a little bit, or like see what, what you can, you can bend the lines a little bit. You, you can, you can make it so that it's like, it's right enough. I mean, the quintessential example that I always use is like a nose, you know, there's so many two dimensional characters that when you see their nose straight on, you actually get a side profile of the nose stuck to the character's face. And in cartoons, we accept that we accept that that is, just a nose facing the viewer, but it totally doesn't make sense. It's a graphic interpretation of what the nose is doing. And so sometimes we need to bend things a little bit to make it work. And that's honestly one of the best things about character design, I find, because there are, there are times when you can just like, yeah, make it, make it work for the viewer, not necessarily like logically. It's not like we're going to mathematically be going through and yeah. making sure it works. Like it needs to just work as a design. So that's great, Hank. I'm, I'm super psyched that you, you found that very important for you. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, do you feel like anything in your portfolio gave you an edge up on the competition? Uh, I... I was trying... I, I'm not... Hmm. It feels a bit hard for me to say. I'd say maybe I'd want to um, highlight that maybe I want to highlight the animation in how um, at least they could see that I was willing to do something like that. Yeah. Um, I it's think very different. I also, yeah, yeah. I think I, I hope that maybe they, they really appreciated that and mm -hmm. um, being able to say that, Hey, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, um, I guess, afraid to do uh, a rotation like that. Sure. Um, and I think I also would want to, uh, use this question to also say that I think with the layouts, um, I, I hope that like, there's a lot of things where like, especially like for this and also for the interior where I was just having things be rotated imperfectly, mm -hmm. um, you know, having some of the picture frames like that and, uh, area, yeah, areas like that where it, it, not everything is following like you have the main uh, vanishing points, but not everything is mm -hmm. following that. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of um, examples I, I see of 
uh, animation portfolios is where they just have everything that's straight on and it doesn't feel lived in like that because everything yeah. is super organized all in the same vanishing point and sure. i i feel like uh i I'd, I'd hope at least that that's something that they'd like to see a little bit more that you, you almost go a bit a bit above and beyond yeah the bench. yeah i i think that's such a critical thing to say like so much of the time when everything is perfectly placed in the room to align to the the two that you've chosen or three um, it just feels like you just learned how to do perspective. You know, it just yeah. it doesn't necessarily feel like a living, breathing environment. It feels like you're doing this perspective assignment for school. You know, it just has that like clinical sort of, uh, I guess, lack of realism uh, when everything is just perfectly there. That's why, mm -hmm. I mean, not to give huge credit to like messy rooms, but messy rooms just are more interesting to draw. Like so much of animated background like look at them look at animated films and look at interiors and you will find mm -hmm. like there's some beautiful clean ones like i think in the incredibles and a whole bunch of other ones there's these super hyper like futuristic clean environments but messy environments are going to be more visually interesting to draw probably most of the time i would i would hazard to say so yeah i think that's it's part of the world building part of the storytelling of the room so that's great you um, tell so much about a character from how the room is, how maybe messy and how messy. Yeah. Kind of yeah, exactly. That is, that is a good point. Like, yeah, we think of the character of characters, but what about the like personality and the character of rooms themselves? Like, even if you took the characters out of this, we would still get a strong story of that room. If so something happened, like, so, or it's abandoned, you know, it, we, we get a strong sense of it even without them in there. So yeah, absolutely. Your, your room has a life just like your characters. Um, Thank you. Last question. So with unlimited resources and a giant staff at your disposal, uh, <laughs> what would be the animated production that you would make, Hank? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, um, I think my, my answer is going to be, it's going to actually tie back to what uh, we've just discussed, what you've just said about the rooms. Um, I think I'm, I'm all, I I re, I am a really big fan of sort of um I guess the little like urban settings the little small things that you might look around and see in your everyday sure. uh, those tiny little things um you know how you open like a water valve that sort of things I think mm -hmm. a lot of times um, I think commonly that stuff is seen as like a bit boring or every day if you wanted sure. to make something animated why would you focus on that you know and it other and a lot of times it tends to get focused on like more of a plot that is beyond or literally escaping that because you sure. know you want to if anything but I, I i think it'd be really exciting to do an animated project that focuses a lot on that where maybe you maybe there's like a story that has those things as a consistent focused feature all of that is animated really well and sure. paid attention to i think that'd be uh i think i'd love that huh fascinating i love that it's not like a a larger than life marvel-esque kind of plot where everything is at stake and the world's gonna end it's like just a subtle re i guess reevaluation of everyday life of just moments that we experience and that's that's great and honestly, like I do see a lot of people, well, at least thinking about that kind of general concept for independent work, because it would mm -hmm. never be done by a big, big studio, right? So like, as yeah. an individual, if you it could, like, it'd be so cool to just like, yeah, think about something from your life itself and, and kind of bring that out. That's, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of student work that focuses on that as well. And they're mm -hmm. always so like to me they're always so so beautiful because yeah. and there's also like you can tell there's so many of like their own self put into that and sure. it's just i mean every of course every student feature has so much of their own self but this is like you see that i, I guess more directly yeah more like they might have taken something directly of inspiration from their own life I mean, yeah sure it's, it's really nice yeah awesome well Thanks so much for the interview, uh, Hank. This has been so great to kind of talk through this on the other side of it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, w I wish you luck at Sheridan. Well-deserved. Fourth time applying, geez. I'm kind of shocked you, you had to apply this many times. But 
you again well deserved enjoy the win Thank you. Thank you so much, Goss. And thank you so much for interviewing me. I, yeah, I, again, I'm so honored to do this. I, I really appreciate this invitation. awesome yeah i mean our students students always watch these they appreciate them so i thought you know this is this is definitely a, a great thing to do so Mm -hmm. well Yeah. take care hey oh yeah And yeah, you too. And yeah, I just want to say I, I wish you I wish you luck in your future uh, thanks tutoring in your classes and awesome all that. It's been really helpful. So thank you so much. oh wonderful good to hear well sounds good take care hank Take care. bye